Uh, this committee hearing will come to order. Uh, this, this hearing today is on human rights in Southeast Asia. And, you know, as we reflect on it, America's commitment to protecting human dignity and justice around the world uh, is unparalleled. Uh, we do more than any other nation, and we should, because this is the one country founded upon this ideal. But this commitment, which has long enjoyed bipartisan support here in the United States, is a key focus of this committee that we serve on. And we've taken legislative action on human rights violations, particularly uh, Venezuela, Nicaragua, North Korea, People's Republic of China. We are also working to strengthen the ability of the United States to promote human rights through international broadcasting. That is one of the reasons why this committee passed legislation to overhaul our international broadcasters so that those who are doing this surrogate free radio broadcasting can send a message that teaches political pluralism, that teaches tolerance, that can have the kind of effect that we had in Eastern Germany uh, and in uh, the rest of Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union. Yesterday, the House passed legislation to reauthorize the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom as a body of experts who speak out on behalf of persecuted believers of any faith the Commission helps to ensure that the U.S. stands up for, many, for what many of us consider our first freedom. Unfortunately, now, when it comes to Southeast Asia, a strategically important region that is home to 620 million souls, the outlook on human rights is very troubling, and in particular with respect to Vietnam. In Vietnam, we have overwhelming evidence that the human rights situation is worth worsening there, with the government continuing its severe crackdown on critics of the regime. We know that the government of Vietnam suppresses virtually all dissent through intimidation, through physical violence, through very, very long prison terms. Uh, these young bloggers are typically getting seven years uh, in prison if they if they blog about ideas like freedom of speech. In my own travels to Vietnam, I have seen firsthand the length that the secret police will go to in order to stifle any form of free speech or religious freedom. I met with the Venerable Thich Quang Do, the uh, head of the Buddhist Church, Unified Buddhist Church in Vietnam, uh, as well as another uh, religious leader who were, who were held, uh, who were imprisoned. And basically saw firsthand what was being done to stifle religious freedom in the country. So we've had 18 meetings now of the U.S.-Vietnam Human Rights Dialogue. There is no improvement in the human rights situation. I call on the government of Vietnam to immediately cease its human rights abuses. We call on the government of Vietnam to release the political prisoners there. In Burma, the regime's early progress on human rights has given way to worsening conditions for religious and ethnic minorities all over that country. The plight of the Rohingya Muslims is well documented thanks to groups such as United to End Genocide. The government's treatment of the Rohingya Muslims is beyond deplorable. Forced to live in what I would call concentration camps there, the Rohingya are systematically deprived of access to health care and threatened with physical harm, threatened with death. The expulsion of Doctors Without Borders, the only group providing health care to the Rohingya, um, and that caused 150 people to die from otherwise curable diseases, uh, is another example. It is time that we take off the rose-colored glasses and see the situation in Burma for what it is. We cannot, we in the United States cannot continue to lavish more incentives on the government in Burma in hopes that it will one day do the right thing. And that is why I have repeatedly called on the administration to work with this committee to improve human rights in that country. We must immediately cease military-to-military -military cooperation with Burma until the systematic persecution of Rohingya Muslims and other minorities has ended there. Too often, 
the administration, like the administrations that preceded this administration, is more interested in not ruffling dim diplomatic feathers than carrying out the difficult but necessary task of pressing for human rights. But human rights do not have to take a back seat to strategic considerations. The administration must, must recognize that its rebalance to Asia will be unsustainable without improvements in this area. Countries that do not respect their citizens' fundamental human rights will not and cannot be true enduring partners to the United, for the United States. And this isn't to say that we must cut off all ties when human rights abuses occur. But it is imperative that we speak out. And that's my point. It's an imperative that we get in, lean in there, sit down with these governments and explain that these deplorable situations in Vietnam and in Burma need to be reversed. There's no excuse for silence on this issue. Now, before I turn to the ranking member, Mr. Engel from New York, for his opening remarks, I want to take the opportunity to welcome Janet Wynn, Supervisor of Orange County's First District, to this committee. Janet's story is a story of millions of Vietnamese who fled their homeland in search of a life free from the horrific human rights abuses that we still see perpetrated today in that country. Janet has come a long way from the dangerous journey that her family took on a 30-foot raft when she was just a small girl fleeing her war-ravaged homeland. Today, Janet is the highest-ranking Vietnamese American to hold elective office in California. And uh, just as important, Janet is a tireless advocate for the Vietnamese American community in Southern California and throughout our country. We welcome her as well. 